my friends, Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and thanks for joining me today. I have the funnest little curb shop project makeover for you today. My sister found this curb shop small sate bench. When she first brought it to me, I'm not gonna lie, I thought, yeah, I'm not overly excited about redoing it, but I'm so happy that we did. Uh, I have some really good quick tips for you today and I can't wait to show you how it all turned out. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. <laughs> Here's the curb shop settee bench we started with. It was structurally sound, but needed a really good cleaning and reupholstering. The fabric smelled quite smoky and there was bird droppings on it to boot. <laughs> So here's how it all came together. And I just want to say a big thank you to my sister, Andrea. She was kind enough to give me a hand with this project as I'm still not up to speed with my foot. Um, so I don't know what I would do without my sister. And sister's the best. I started by cutting off these old dirty tassels. And then I removed, or we removed the old seat using an impact driver, which makes it super easy. After we removed the seat from the base, I gave the body of this bench a really good cleaning with white lightning, which is a TSP substitute. And then I gave it a scuff sanding with a 220 sanding sponge. Nothing crazy. I just wanted to give it a little overall scuff and this gives the paint tooth to stick to. Now this bench makeover is for Andrea and she wanted a very similar color except she wanted it to look fresh and clean and new of course. So I had a little bit of this sand castle all-in-one silk paint left over but I didn't think it was quite enough to do two coats on this bench. So I added in a little bit of endless shore to the sand castle and this gave me enough paint for two to three coats on the settee. Um, and it also color matched beautifully. It, it was dead on with what she wanted. So uh, when matching paint, here's a quick tip. When matching paint, I like to use a paper plate to mix my colors. And a tip is to let them dry before deciding which is a close match. You can also use a color match app like Dixie Bell has here. I'll show you what it looks like on screen and I'll also add the link down below for you if you want to go play around on it. They are a lot of fun. You can mix and match colors and play around with uh, a specific color if you want. It'll tell you which paints to use to get that spe specific color. Uh, so they're a lot of fun to use. And most large paint brands, for instance, Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams, etc., they have these apps on their site as well. And these are all free to use. And they're not only fun, the accuracy is impressive. To make new arms for this settee bench, we repurposed old chair spindles. And I have to say, I love the way these came out. Each spindle or chair spindle had a hole in it, which I'll share how to cover that up easy peasy in, uh, in a little bit, so stay tuned. And it was slightly too long for the bench to fit in properly. So we started by picking the chair spindle that had a nice shape and that we like the looks of. Then I measured each, each side with a measuring tape and it was 11 and a quarter inches long. I cut the chair spindle to size using my miter saw and then we installed the arm by using a large screw through the hole on the body of the bench and then through the actual armchair. Now, I will say that if this bench, if I was doing this bench for sale, I wouldn't have done it this way. This is really a quick and dirty way of attaching these arms to, to the bench settee. Uh, however, just because it's gonna be for my sister and she wasn't overly particular, this worked out perfect. To hide the holes on the chair spindles and the holes on the frame, 
it was would you bend to the rescue and i've made a good few videos on would you bend and it's no secret how much i love this bendable wood uh, i keep all the little bits and pieces of would you bend because they not only hide imperfections but they make everything look beautiful would you bend appliques are bendable once they're heated. You can stain them, you can paint them, you can cut them, you can shape them and mold them to whatever you're gluing them on. Uh, they're really remarkable what you can do with these with, with would you bend. And I'll leave the link in the description down below. I'll also leave a card up above so you can see how to apply these would you bend appliques as well. Aren't these sweet floral roses super sweet and look how perfectly they disguise the hole although this paint is an all-in-one so the top coat is also included i decided to use a clear wax over the entire piece and this was not so much for protection because as i mentioned already it has the top coat included but it was to provide a base coat for some darker wax and here's a quick tip Whenever you want to highlight details with a darker wax, be sure to use a clear wax first. And the reason being is if you're unaccustomed to working with wax and, and you're kind of, the dark wax can seem very intimidating. I know every time I used to put out, when I first started painting furniture, every time I started putting on a dark wax, I think my heart would stop because I think, oh, I'm going to ruin it. Oh my gosh, it's intimidating. So to get over that fear all you have to do is use your clear wax first then use your dark wax in this case i added a gray wax to the details and then wiped back the excess and this way if you make a mistake all you have to do is dip a soft cloth into the clear wax and use it as an eraser and the dark wax will come right off it's it's like magic so just always remember if you're, you know, a little hesitant to dark wax, put a clear wax on first, then your dark wax. And if a mistake is made, just put a little bit of clear wax on a cloth and erase that dark wax right off. It works like magic. I also wanted to mention when it comes to waxing, when we think of dark waxing, we usually think of black or brown, but using a softer gray works really really nicely and you can also make a custom color wax by mixing a tiny little bit of paint into a clear wax i've done this with pink i've done it with blues and it really turns out beautiful so now it was on to reupholstering the seat andre removed the old seat fabric and foam and had new foam cut to size at the foam center here in burlington and here's another little tip for you if you have a local foam center in your area be sure to check it out when doing these type of projects uh, for eleven dollars we had a one inch piece of foam cut to the shape of our board and glued on for us and that's remarkable because when we went to fabric land for the exact same size they were selling for twenty four dollars and we would have had to cut it ourselves and we would have had to glue it ourselves so if you have a foam center in your area, it's well worth checking it out. Uh, to recover the new seat, Andrea cut the batting to size, um, leaving about an extra six to eight inches all around the edges. And then we cut some leftover velvet fabric and we oversize that as well because you wanna leave quite a bit so you can wrap it around to the underside of the bench. Um, then using one of my favorite tools, my pneumatic staple gun, we stapled the batting and fabric to the underside of the bench. And I have a full tutorial on how to reupholster a seat, which again, I'll add in the description down below and the cards above. And just a quick tip when reupholstering, make sure you pull it taunt from each side. So as you can see here, we put one staple on one side, then working the opposite, we pulled taunt, added another staple, and then we went to the opposite end, pulled taunt, added the staple, and we did the same with the other side. And then, and only then, we actually flipped it over, made sure it all looked good, then flipped it back over and started adding in 
all our staples around the sides. Thank goodness there's a visual for this because I don't know if I described that properly, <laughs> but I hope you get what I mean. Once all our fabric was stapled on, uh, we cut the excess fabric off and to finish it off, the seat was reattached with this original long screws from the underside of the bench. And here's how it all came together. So here's the before. And here's the after. I can't wait to hear what you think. So I hope this makeover has inspired you to try something as well. Uh, I hope some tips have given you some good ideas for some of your projects. If so, feel free to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe. I can't believe I'm at 15,000 already. I've been putting out videos on Saturday and also bonus videos on every Wednesday. So if you're liking this content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. You can also find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. And also on all my socials and if you're hearing this squeaky oh my god my apologies because I have this I can't even lift my leg I have this boot on because uh, you guys some of you may have known I broke my foot you might even see the cane over in the corner so I have to sit on my little mechanics chair but it's making all these squeaky noises so I'm sorry um, anyways back on track you can follow me on all my socials I hope you have a fabulous week. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here so much. I cannot say. So have a fabulous week and uh, thanks. I will talk to you again soon. Bye guys.